In this problem, we're trying to estimate a population mean, and we don't know the population standard deviation, so we need to use t procedures if possible. Let's use the four-step solving process. So for state, we want our confidence level and also the parameter we're trying to estimate. So we'll say, we wish to estimate with 95% confidence the true mean takeoff velocity of all bullfrogs in meters per second. In the plan step, we need our inference method as well as the conditions. So if conditions are met, we will construct a t-interval for population mean. That's our inference method. So the random condition. It says right in the problem this was a random sample of bullfrog jumps. For the independent condition, we're not sampling, so we're not really interested in the 10% condition. Instead, we just need to assume that each of the bullfrog jumps is independent of the others. It's kind of like when you're flipping a coin. Each coin toss is independent. So we're going to assume that each bullfrog jump is independent. Now for the normal condition, we have a sample size of 20. So it's too small for the central limit theorem to apply, which we would need 30. So we need to check for strong skewness and outliers. To do this, we can use the calculator. Start by inputting the data into list 1. To do this, press the stat button, then enter and type all the values into list 1. Once all the data is input, let's use a modified box plot to check for outliers. To do this, press second and then the y equals button, which accesses the stat plot menu. If you press enter for plot 1 and turn it on by pressing enter again, scroll over to the modified box plot. That's this one. You can leave everything else as is if you typed your data into list 1. Now when I press zoom and 9, it will zoom to the correct setting to see this box plot. Now what's important is we don't see any outliers. The whiskers go all the way to the end of the data. There's no little points beyond it which would indicate outliers. Next let's check for skewness. If you press second and y equals again, let's make a histogram. So the histogram is this third option here. If we press zoom and 9 again, we get a histogram. And it looks kind of skewed. I need to caution you here. These TI calculators tend to make things look right skewed when they're set to the default zoom 9, the zoom stat setting. Here's a better way to look at it. Press the window button after pushing zoom 9 first and change this to an integer, like 2 and the max to an integer as well. And let's actually, we'll change the x scale to about 0.3. Now when we push graph, the data doesn't look as skewed. I would explore a few different class sizes, which you can do by changing the x scale. Yeah, I don't think there's strong skewness at all here. So we can write a box plot and histogram of the sample data showed a distribution without strong skewness or outliers. There's one more way to check if the data is approximately normally distributed. If you press second and y equals again, go to plot one and go to the last option. When you press zoom nine, you get a normal probability plot. As long as all these dots seem approximately in a linear pattern, you can assume the data is approximately normal. And in this case, they do appear approximately linear. So we can assume the data is approximately normal. So we can write a normal probability plot also shows an approximately linear pattern. So the data seems approximately normally distributed. It is safe to use T procedures. Now we're ready to actually construct our confidence interval. So our confidence interval is going to be a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. In this case, x bar plus or minus t star times s sub x over the square root of n. So to find out what some of these values are, if we press the stat button and go over to calculate, press enter for one var stats, and we're going to run them on list one. You can leave the frequency list blank, and when you press enter, Here's x bar and also s sub x. So let's copy those values down. Now to find t star, we need the critical value that cuts off the middle 95% of a t distribution with 19 degrees freedom. That's n minus 1 degrees freedom. To do that, press second vars 
and go down to inverse T. For area, we're not going to put 95%. We're going to put 0.975. That's because this value includes everything to the left of our upper cutoff value. So the middle 95%, but also the lower tail of 2.5%. For degrees freedom, let's put 19. And it will calculate our T star for us. So our critical value is approximately 2.093 in this case. But instead of calculating this whole interval manually, let's use a calculator to do it. If you press stat and you go over to test, the eighth option is T interval. If we press enter there, you can choose if you want to put in summary statistics, which we have, but let's just use the raw data. So if we leave it on data and say use list one, use it one time, and use a confidence level of 95%. When we press enter, we get our interval. So our interval is 3.1404 to 3.6676. On the AP exam, anytime you write a calculator command, make sure you also write the formula and the values you input, just so they're sure you know what you're talking about. Now we're ready to conclude. We are 95% confident that the true mean bullfrog takeoff velocity is in between 3.1404 and 3.6676 meters per second. For part B, notice 3.1 is not a value that's within our interval. So we'll say no, we have evidence this study's conclusion is wrong. However, there is a 5% chance we produced an interval that didn't capture the true parameter value but it's more likely the study is wrong. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.